Yard option has so many pluses and I'm so excited on, on behalf of trees and the citizens of Salt Lake City that we make this option available to people. One of the main things that inspired it was the health and sustainability of the city's large growing species of trees. As a result of the difficult space that many of our big trees grow in in the park strip, we're seeing them uh, be lost well before their time. They're just not living as long as they should. And even those that do make it to large size, their condition can be compromised and their anchorage can be compromised because of the conditions that they're living in in the park strip. Uh, the problem that we're uh, addressing, John, these are big trees uh, that we're trying to protect in small park strips. Uh, the space is very restrictive for the root system and all the physiological and biological needs the tree needs to be able to obtain from their growing site. You can see all new sidewalk next to that tree. In the course of uh, repairing sidewalks, sometimes roots are cut. Uh, and when those roots are cut, the anchorage can be influenced, the absorptive ability of the uh, root system can be influenced that provides all the raw material uh, in terms of mineral elements and water for the top of the tree. So we see trees declining as a result of public way construction projects. This tree also, you can see, has a prominent lean or a bow in the trunk. Uh, much of the mass is leaning out towards the street. So the anchorage system on the sidewalk side of the tree is critical. There's just not very many roots on the street side of the tree because the root system is looking for moisture and air. And underneath the streets, those elements that it requires just are not very abundant. So the root system doesn't grow in that direction very much. So much of the root system that tree depends on is going off into the front yard, which is supporting not only the anchorage of the tree, but all of its water and mineral element needs as well. As this big tree is removed in the future, we'll come back in with a species that at maturity will probably be 15 or 20 feet tall. And that's happening throughout the city, and we don't want to lose our big trees. You can see the new sidewalk here, John, and um, this tree has pretty much occupied the space from the back of the curb to the sidewalk. It doesn't have very much more room to expand, but it will have to expand because trees either grow or they die. And as this tree continues to grow, It'll buckle the sidewalk, it'll uh, lift the curb and gutter, uh, the flow of the gutter will be displaced, uh, insects will find it a good place to call home, uh, the tripping hazard will then become serious for pedestrians and skateboarders and everybody using the space. So long term, this is a, an area where this tree probably uh, doesn't have a whole lot more years. Uh, and we need to put a tree in here that's more compatible with the space, so it'll be a much smaller tree at maturity. Another example of uh, the hardship the trees uh, uh, deal with in the park strip, John. Uh, this Norway maple is directly underneath some high voltage uh, power lines and uh, the electricity is a vital part of our lives and we don't want to interrupt that and as trees grow up into the wires they can cause outages and fires and all kinds of things so the power company has the responsibility to clear these trees from the wires to maintain safe, reliable and cost effective service to their customers. But the consequence, invariably, is major alterations to the trees. Uh, this is not the tree's normal architecture. Uh, this is not the way the tree wants to be. Uh, but it's the reality of the space that it's living in, which is another plus for the front yard option. We'll be able to get these trees out from underneath these power lines, give them more space to grow, and the likelihood of severe alterations uh, in terms of pruning will be reduced a lot just by virtue of their being moved into the front yard. Here about the life of this tree, or the former life of this tree. We just removed this tree within the last 30 days, but you can see by virtue of the size of the trunk of the tree, this was rather a large tree in a park strip that's probably only three or four feet wide. The street side of the tree, the root crown of the tree, has no bark on it at all. Uh, all the bark is sloughed off and all the vascular system underneath the tree has died. Uh, this section of the tree's root system is starting to curl back on itself. That's referred to as a girdling root. And this root is growing back on itself because as it tried to explore the soil volume on the street side, it found that the conditions just weren't favorable for its growth. Found fruiting bodies of fungus organisms that were in the vascular system of the tree that were impairing what roots were still trying to absorb moisture and minerals from the soil from effectively doing their job. These fungus disease act a little bit like uh, hardening of the arteries. They get into the vascular system of the tree 
and constrict and impair it and as a result the movement of moisture and mineral elements into the vascular system that are northbound trying to get up to the foliage to the site of photosynthesis are all compromised because of this girdling root system. Uh, also the discoloration in the center of this tree is indicative of uh, diseases that are not uncommon for trees that are growing in these difficult conditions. This tree lived in this location for about 35 years and a lot of people think 35 years is a good long lifespan for a tree. The reality is the genetic potential of this tree is more like a hundred years. So because of its location and the life that it endured in this difficult space, it lived for about a third uh, as long as it could have lived. Another really compelling reason to move the big trees from these difficult park strip settings into the front yard. Whenever we plant trees, we always ask uh, blue stakes to come and identify the location of all underground utilities. This marking right here is the location where the homeowner's sewer lateral from their house connects to the city main. You can see the distance between the sewer lateral and the trunk of the tree is probably less than three feet. So the potential over the lifespan of the tree of its root system getting in there just by virtue of the proximity of the two is real high. This yellow line indicates the location of the gas service that goes into the home and this is the water meter which provides water service to the home. All of these utilities and more are in the same park strip that the trees trying to call home. We can be better stewards of our trees by just moving them in a position where they're proximity to all these important utilities will be more distant and any kind of conflicts will be reduced. What I always ask people to do is to use their imagination and consider themselves to be a tree and try and realize what the life of a tree is like. Once we establish where the tree is being planted, that's the home for the tree for its life. And many trees have the genetic potential of being 100 years old, so we need to be very thoughtful about where we're putting the tree and do the best we can for the tree. To shift the focus a little bit from all the good things that we want trees to do for us. I want it to shade my house, I want it to provide some aesthetic value, uh, I want it to be a nice place in my garden. Those are all important things that trees do for us. This particular front yard option that we're talking about today, and that is what we can do for the tree. By putting the tree in a good location, we've done a lot of good things for the tree and made its life so much better. We just planted this tree for Kathy and Max today. This is a sycamore maple tree. At maturity, it'll be probably 60 feet tall and 40 or 50 feet wide. And I'd like you to look, if you can, at the difference in terms of distance from where we've planted this tree in their front yard. So this tree is close enough to this historical planting location where it still will serve a critical function in terms of being a street tree. But the thing that is so important to understand is that many street trees in park strip settings live a fraction of their lifespan's potential. This tree, in contrast, will live far longer because it's just in a better place to grow. One of the other real important aspects of planting trees in this space has to do with water conservation. And some people scratch their head a little bit when I mention that. But it's, it's an important thing to think about. The trees that are next to our streets are next to a solar collecting surface. The asphalt, the concrete, whatever that surface should be made out of, it collects a lot of heat in the course of the day. It's not uncommon for the surface temperature of the street to be 120 to 140 degrees in the course of a hot summer afternoon. As a result of the tree's closeness to the street, it is in a hotter environment, and for the tree to maintain its coolness and to keep all the physiological processes going, it has to have access to a lot of water. Otherwise, we see trees turning brown and shedding leaves early in the season. It's a very common phenomenon all over the valley. And it's because of that proximity to the heat source and the fact that most park strip trees don't get the water that they need. And it's important to remember that as much as we love trees and we're being good stewards of water, trees are water demanding plants. And a cost of having a big, healthy, beautiful tree in our arid climate here in Salt Lake City is water. And this tree will have access to a larger volume of soil, more uh, water from the roof and uh, gutter being drained to this area 
than it would ever experience in the confines of the park strip. So in terms of water conservation, this will be a great plus for our trees and the city's effort to save water. By placing a tree in the front yard, as it grows, it will provide more shade quicker and it will, the tree will be longer lived. So it will shelter this home for a far longer period of time. And as a result, the home will require less cooling in the summer months and less warming in the winter months because as this deciduous tree sheds its leaves, sunlight will be able to get to the residents. So we know that energy conservation will be enhanced by this as well, in particular because this will be a longer lived, bigger, healthier tree. You might want to just take a look at the size of this tree and compare it to the tree that's in the front yard right to the north of us. It is the very same species of tree. Based on its size, its age, it's had a lifetime of value to that property, sheltering it, enhancing it, and the tree's in a much better place than it would be in the park strip. The life of this young tree that we've just planted for Kathy and Max will be equally as good and equally as long. It won't live just 35 years like the park strip tree did. It will live twice as long easily. So with regard to making sure that we can pass this wonderful resource of big trees onto the people that will live in our city for generations to come, we're offering this opportunity to plant city trees and care for the trees for homeowners that are interested in providing a space in their front yard for the city tree. For those folks that are interested in doing so, we hope that they'll call the city's forestry division. Our telephone number is 972-7818 and uh, let us uh, help them with their front yard tree. Uh, we'll provide the tree and we'll plant the tree and we'll care for the tree just as we would if it were in the park strip. But we're putting it in the front yard because we know it'll have a better life here. It will live longer and it will do more good things for the environment. But people do need to understand that if they want this option, there is an agreement that has to be signed between the homeowner and the city. It's basically a voluntary program. People who want to participate are encouraged to call us. If people prefer to have the tree planted in the park strip, we still provide that service. Uh, we hear the trees cheering all around us because they know their life will be better being in your front yard. The program is completely voluntary. If you want to do it, we'd love to do it for you. If you prefer the tree in the park strip, we can do that as well. Thank you.